Thank you so much for joining us on Africa this morning. We're now on Table Talk. There's a lot that we're going to be doing. As you can see, there's a busy table here, but that demonstration will catch us as we continue with the conversation. We are talking about leadership in business and specifically touching on health matters. And joining us to share her story is Elizabeth Simiu Bisha. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having Welcome me. Welcome to Ebru Africa. Thank you. I am very excited about the demonstration you gave me earlier <laughs> yes. on weight loss and lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. But first, we'll want to know your story. As a leader in business, you've been listed under the top 40 under 40. We'd want to know the background of your leadership, even mm -hmm. as we're taking on the conversation. Well, um, let me start from my education. I am trained as an engineer. Uh, I studied at Jemo Kenyatta. And after that, I went uh, to work at Kenjan for about six years. Yeah. And uh, at that point is when uh, the, the, the story of Slim Therapy started. Slim Therapy is uh, the first weight loss franchise uh, locally owned in Kenya. Um, I started it through my own need uh, to lose weight, basically. Mm -hmm. I was really, really big after my first son. So that's when I started uh, researching on what solutions there were out there for weight loss. And uh, I came across uh, electrotherapy, which is um, a muscle stimulation. And that's how I started a Slim Therapy Nairobi. And that's when the need grew. I mean, people were calling me from all over the country. When are you coming here? When are you coming here? And I, I thought, uh, how can I do this without stretching myself too thin? Mm -hmm. And that's how the idea of a franchise was born. The moment you, before you get into the success, which you have been recognized for, which mm -hmm. is a slim therapy, electro... Electrotherapy. Electrotherapy. Yes. <laughs> Let's look at the journey towards the invention. Mm -hmm. During that moment when you're trying to get a solution for yourself, Share with us how you, you know, you wandered through the forest I to know. get to a point and said, I'm going to own this. I'm yeah. going to create a solution for myself, regardless of whether the market has anything available for me. Well, let me start with, uh, how, where do I start? <laughs> the end of this <laughs> a lot. I know, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I was like a size 16, yeah, after my son was born. Mm. And I started the journey by, you know, there are a lot of solutions out there, right? So I started by crash dieting, uh, pills, and then I bought a treadmill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the treadmill, uh, was it was a very good solution because, uh, yes, I did see some progress in terms of weight loss, but my tummy, which was the most uh, pesky yeah. uh, part, yeah. was still uh, hanging out in there. So I thought to myself, no, now I need to look for now a specific solution for this problem. So I did some market research and I tried looking around and thinking, what solutions are there for tummy weight loss, you know, abs and uh, pelvic muscle uh, stimulation. Yeah. And that is how I came to find out about the Faradix. And Faradix has been used for years as a um, physiotherapy tool. It's been used for athletes who want to uh, keep their fitness up but are maybe injured at some point. So it's something that has been used since the 1900s. And uh, I just uh, read the research behind it and it Turns out that after some time, they realized that it can also be used as a muscle stimulant for weight loss, which was a very exciting concept for me. So I tried it. Um, I, I got my own machine and I just I, I tried it on myself and I thought, wow, this works, you know. And uh, after that, I started a, a small outlet because I thought, now what what next? I started a small outlet and that's when I saw the demand growing and I couldn't just stay small. I had to respond to the demand. Mm -hmm. So if I had decided uh, to you know, lag behind, then I think today Slim Therapy would not be what it is. So the fact that I really decided to respond because the market has always been calling out to me, that's how we expanded to where we are today. Share with us how you tried to balance both mm -hmm. because I know there's the need to be you know focused my career I know and then there's the side passion which is what you really really want to do yeah how did you navigate the the two tags of mm -hmm. your mind and your soul wow okay so engineering has it's been my life since I was 20 you know and I saw the excitement in engineering mm -hmm. and it's something I still practice today so for me the beauty of this treatment is that I was when I was trained, I was able to train others to manage it. That's the, the, the weight loss treatment. So it's not as easy as training someone to be an engineer. Mm -hmm. You know that one, it's a bit more personal. But this is something that when you, somebody has, got, has grasped the concept, they can 
carry it forward. So I have a very well-trained team. That is even how I'm able to expand into franchises because I'm able to train other people and leave them to run with it, you know. And then all you have to do is keep on overseeing mm -hmm. and making sure that what they're doing is correct. And then there is, of course, the other contraindications that I have to keep monitoring. Yeah. And then there's the nutrition planning, which I do personally. So those, uh, the training part of it really helps with the, with the staff I have and with the franchises I have right now. When you started off the journey, now we are getting into the thicket of now the... I always forget the name. Electrotherapy. Because electrotherapy. <laughs> it's, because I know, for it's me, it's, it's very... Name. There's a therapy around it, yes, but the electro part for me is a bit uncomfortable, which we want to actually iron out at this point. Yes. The moment you got into the electrotherapy, mm -hmm. therapy, how did you get yourself training? How did you get yourself support? Where did you seek support? Mm -hmm. And the challenges that you are going through even as you're navigating this new field in Kenya? You know, Google is your friend. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I started, um, first I started by doing a lot of market research in Kenya. And there were, there were a few outlets who were doing something similar already in Nairobi. So that was where my market research started. But I decided I wanted to do it professionally. And I decided researching if there was anywhere where there could be, I could get any training, any sort of knowledge that I could, you know, certify myself with. And that's how I came across this uh, health technology uh, training program that it's an online program, uh, originates from South Africa. And it gives you training on paradigms and uh, on um, nutrition planning. So th th that training really was the bedrock of where the professional um, services of slim therapy started from. From there, I was able to uh, give people answers on the scientific uh, concept behind electrotherapy because mm -hmm. before that, I just knew it worked, but I didn't know the, the science exactly, yeah. the how of it. So the training helps you to understand the working of your pelvic muscles your abdominal uh, base and how these muscles can be stimulated passively, you know, involuntarily to help you to lose the weight. Mm -hmm. So basically what the machine does is it stimulates your muscles. It imitates muscle movement the same way you would be doing exercise. So people always ask me, isn't that a shortcut? Yeah. Because that's what I was putting yeah, that's to what you, you were asking yeah. me earlier. Uh, you just lie down and the machine does all the work. But if you've spoken to any of my clients, and even me, the first time I went through it, it's, you, it's a workout. You come out of there feeling exhausted. Your muscles feel like, you know, there's the muscle strain and the muscle pain that comes with, with like normal exercise. The only difference is that the machine is able to push you further than you'd be able to push yourself. But one would actually question, okay, if it's pushing me further than I would be able to push myself, mm -hmm. then isn't it doing all the work for me? And that would make me, in a sense, almost lazy not to take up the responsibility of one, being health conscious in what I consume, mm -hmm. conscious about what exactly I'm doing in terms of keeping myself fit, regardless of whether I'm using the machine mm -hmm. or not. The, actually, our treatment, our whole program involves a lifestyle change as well. Yeah. It involves a nutrition planning. And if you do not participate in the program, if you do not show up, if, you do, if you're not consistent, if you do not, like we keep a food diary, if you do not uh, f give your food journal entries, then you will not see the full benefits of the program. It's like a boot camp. For me, I would say... And that is what it needed, especially when it comes to aggressive situations exactly. that one is dealing with. Yes, mm -hmm. you have to be disciplined. And the, people say it's easy to just come and lie down, but I've had clients quit because they just couldn't take that the, this intensity anymore you know so it's it is a different method but I for me I don't think it's a lazy method in fact I think it's much more intense than just being at the gym because when you're at the gym yes you 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 get tired and you work out and you run and you but this if you don't if you even if you do it or not whether you're lying down or I mean whether you're in it or not in terms of you have when you as long as you're lying down there the machine is doing the muscle movement for you at the end of the day you're going to feel that strain when you're at the gym you can decide after running for i don't know 15 minutes that you had it and then you forget about it but for this it's a 45 minute session you have to finish it is it a, you talked about contraindications earlier mm -hmm. are there what are those contraindications side effects as well because you'd also want to know one the electro part of which i'm very uncomfortable <laughs> with the electro part of it dissect it for us so that we better understand when you're talking about contraindications yes how they present themselves mm -hmm. physically so the machine actually stimulates your nerves nervous system 
um, I think you felt it on your arm. You and we'll do like it a little bit you, later. You, yes. <laughs> yeah. It grabs and releases your muscles. So if you have something like a pacemaker, a pacemaker is already designed to stimulate a muscle. Mm. It has its own uh, pace and rhythm. This machine can interfere with that rhythm. So if you have a pacemaker, we do not recommend that you do the treatments. Um, if you're pregnant, obviously, that's one of the other contraindications. If you have any uh, central nervous system issues like epilepsy, um, there are very many contraindications, but those are some of the major ones. Mm -hmm. Also weak bones, because you know, if something is grabbing at your bones and you already have brittle or weak bones, osteoporosis, arthritis, these are some of the things that they can affect you adversely if you're using the machine. So it's the electrowaves go as deep as hitting at the bones, so as to, you know, um, ignite the muscle movement right from the bone to the uh, to the top part of the dermis? I wouldn't say uh, the bone, it's the core muscle. Mm. So we have different programs. So there's a ton tonal programs for toning, and then there's the core muscle program. So the core muscle programs would hit uh, close to your bones, you understand, because your muscles are... Yeah. So that would not be recommended for somebody who has always had weak bones. There are people who, when, from when they were young, they fall down, they just break, break their bones bone, very yeah. easily, yes. Mm -hmm. So such kind of issues. Even as we are looking at the electrotherapy, you are celebrated for your efforts, one, as a business leader, as a woman business leader specifically, and one who is campaigning for, you know, better consciousness in wellness. Yes. Share with us the moment you got that note that you're one of the top 40 under 40 women in Kenya. Well, uh, first I got the, the email that t tells you that you are being considered and that email in no way, shape or form means <laughs> <laughs> that, that you are. That amazing. you are. So yeah. I, there was that excitement, but there was also that calm down. You have to wait and see. And then uh, the day they came out in the papers, I don't know why it had totally slipped my mind. So um, I got like my first call like at 6.30 a.m. and it was a friend of mine. And she told me, oh, hi, congratulations. I was like, for what? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, you don't know, uh, buy a business daily. So <laughs> as soon as she said that, I was like, I know what that means. Yeah. So I was over the moon. I couldn't believe it. I called my husband. He's like, oh, congratulations. You know, he, he really is supportive. And um, my family, I got a lot of uh, accolades. And for me to actually get used to the idea, it took about, I don't know, a week. And then after we had the award ceremony, it started to like dawn on me what kind of responsibility mm. that comes with this uh, award. It's not just about winning the award, it's about taking it further, going into mentorship, taking responsibility as somebody who is now recognized as somebody who should be an example to the younger women and men out there. Even as you're talking about the young women, what have you done since the award ceremony when you got the accolade and you recognize the responsibility that the accolade carries with it? Mm -hmm. yeah. I've had a lot of uh, mentorship training and I, I really take it upon myself to mentor, especially my employees. I only hire uh, young ladies, uh, especially women from uh, maybe disadvantaged backgrounds. So it's something that I try to raise them into becoming their own you know, going into their own and uh, finding their own passion and leaving it. So it's something that I have continued to do before I got the, the, the recognition, but now it has become sort of like a, um, a, a program mantra. on its own. Yeah. yeah, I need to do it as a program on its own, mm -hmm. a mantra, yeah.